Hi, Tony Selzer here. Welcome to the Experience Economy. I have one of my favorite people and one of the, the experts on how technology is changing the way we consume, literally running a, a, a national company here that is managing thousands of marketing campaigns for SMBs all over the U.S., Aaron Boggs, president of Rev Local. Aaron, thanks so much way for being on the kind. Experience Way Academy. too kind. Way too kind. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you feel good now, but then I'll go after you a little bit later. Okay, good. Bring it. So, so um, this, this concept that we've been working on, I, I want to tell you this quick story. I go into this, I go into one of my favorite restaurants, okay? And the, um, I'm probably spending three to $4,000 there a year. And I t talk to the owner almost every day and, I'm, you know, he's like, uh, I, I was looking at his online presence. I gave him some advice. You know, I told him about you guys. I said, hey, you know, these guys are really good at this. And he goes, and I said, hey, by the way, you know, um, do you guys have a loyalty program? And he kind of looked at me like weird and like, you know, he's like, well, you're not on it. And I'm like, dude, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars in here and I haven't even got bought a drink. You know what I mean? And he was clueless. And, and it was it was just it was amazing to me on how technology could have made such a better experience for me to be a regular guest. And I brought th probably hundreds, if not thousands of guests in that restaurant over the last two or three years. And yet he wasn't using it. You know what I mean? And, and is that really what it, I, I felt offended? And I think I can justify. Would you agree? Yeah, I, in one way. But we also have to be uh, good stewards of helping people through such significant change. I mean, if you look at the experiences of business owners, it's fragmented more than it's ever been because we're trying to come out of something we didn't predict. And right. so what is working for one may be extremely different for the other. And then you cobble that all with for hundreds of years, the business owners had a lot of had a lot of power, you know, especially right. local businesses. Today, the consumer has all of the power and we're still trying to to build around that. Well, the consumer has that, that power. And I would argue there's also the, the, the intermediaries and the in-betweens, the guys that understood technology better than that restaurant owner. And I, you're right. I got to give them a pass because the last two years that he's had is they have t using their knowledge of how to of how they can command, you know, Google marketing online, all these things that they understand that the guy who's running a one person, a one restaurant shop doesn't really have time to even understand which is a really kind of really ascends into your value and what you guys do every day. They have taken advantage of that and taken out the margin dollars into there. And, and so this guy's probably even annoyed that he has to buy another piece of technology to maintain his relationship with me. Is that fair? I think today is probably harder to be a business owner than it's ever been. The mm -hmm. pace of change, uh, what you have to deal with from an employment side. And so I do not know how a business owner can keep up this is what I do for a living. And I struggle mm -hmm. to keep up with 500 employees being able to administer what we know today and tomorrow it's going to change. And, then, you know, we've worked with Google for a long time, both of us. Mm -hmm. Google's not interested in it becoming easier. No. They live in the world of complexity. Mm -hmm. and so the small business is being left behind more than ever. Mm -hmm. and so it's a, it's a difficult, difficult time to administer effective marketing and be able to continuously change as an operator of a business. Well, let, let's talk about that, right? Because you've got these converging trends. So, so the, the SMB, the, these small businesses, uh, it's harder and harder to manage the day-to-day. 25%, let's just focus on restaurants for a second. 25% of the labor pool is gone and not coming back, right? Tony, Tony, three years ago when we talked, if I mm -hmm. would have told you, that a lot of my customers want to change their marketing dollars from a, from a gaining new customers to trying to gain employees, you would have said what? Right. You're crazy. You know what? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like the changes that we're dealing with and how that we're effectively helping these businesses, we really have become business coaches as marketers. For, for sure. For sure. So we're now marketing for external customers. And we're marketing for internal customers, right? So right. it's dual sided. Now, let me make it even more complicated. And the, the that internal customer demands that you understand how to deal with me through the, through these pieces of technology. Demands it, right? And will not even use you. Will not even like I I, I spent 20, 30 minutes the other day trying to explain to a guy who's got one hundred seventy percent turnover. 
why when he waits 48 hours to return a, a resume or to, to book somebody to come in for an interview, he's already lost them. You know, and, and that's the level of knowledge. So you've got this trend going this way. You've got this trend going this way. And the guy's caught in between. How did they succeed? Yeah. So you have to focus on the things that matter most. You know, in, in our business, we teach our, our, our customers that uh, being easy to work with, mm -hmm. being frictionless mm -hmm. is the ultimate way to transact right now. And right. You have to meet you have to meet the the customers where they're at because mm -hmm. many of them want to want to do business with you differently, mm -hmm. and so in a focused strategy with a lot of these business owners, I come back to I think that branding is more important than it's ever been. Yeah, what is the brand? What is the business? Who are you? How is it speaking on your behalf? And how mm -hmm. is it creating a positive experience that can be residual? Raving fans are working more than ever for us when they have a positive experience. Yeah. Well, and, and you have to understand where those moments of truth are, where right. where your brand can be extended and connected to those people because it's you, different you remember, than it's ever been. You remember, so about eight years ago, Google came out with the ZMOT, zero yep. moment of yep. truth, because yep. they're trying to transition the mindset of the business owner from mm -hmm. traditional marketing to digital marketing. Well, mm -hmm. zero moment of truth is no longer in justification to transition to digital marketing. It's the complexity within digital marketing, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you know, as you see these buyers, let's let's come back to this internal customer because I really think it's one of those things. I mean, we 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 run an organ. We we created an event that just kind of blew up called CEO Belay. And it was just about being around other leaders that are, are struggling with recruiting, retaining and, and, and developing their employees, especially now. Like like you're, you're going through this. I know I'm going through this. We have employees that have never stepped into our office that have worked with for us for over a year. Right. Right. And probably never will. Right. We're going to we're, we're buying another company and we're going office -less. And, and so now we've got an external customer we, that we've never, you know, actually sat in a conference room with that, that we need to build a relationship with them. We need to connect it with them. And we're doing it through a Zoom. I mean, it's just it's changing. And I think that's really the preface of our show. It's like you are no longer selling a product or service. You're not selling a job. You're selling an experience. And, and these mediums that we deal with, technology, whatever connected point that we have, we have to understand that our brand is coming through. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And let me add just uh, what appears to be another complexity to that. Mm -hmm. The customer cares about what your employees think mm -hmm. of you as a business. Mm -hmm. And so the employee experience has somehow found its way in this digital transformation Mm -hmm. into the buying experience of your clients. And so that's where I come back to brand matters more than ever. Culture matters more than ever mm -hmm. because the lines are blurred in the mm -hmm. definition of culture. For, for years, we would read a culture book and it was all about the in-house experience of your employees and how to create great leadership within mentorship programs. But now the clients are involved into your own brand employee experience. And so yep. I'm a huge fan of doubling down on culture, making sure that your employees are breathing your core values because it actually flows to the client and the customer experience. So, so Aaron, how do you guys get your customer, your internal customers, those employees to feel your culture when they've never been in your building? So that's what keeps me up at night. Right. Um, <laughs> we, we, I say things like we're not ER doctors. Yeah. You know, we we can use our personality to benefit each other's experiences. Sure. Uh, how do we create a culture where we know that we care about one another? Where our three core values are be real, go beyond and help someone. Mm -hmm. So they're actionable towards each other, whether you're face to face or in a, in a digital experience. But we kicked off. Uh, we took the old SNL platform. We took our monthly meetings. And we started to produce them because we knew that the experience that they would have, we were doing skits off of old SNL, you know, oh, fun. that's awesome. Matt, the Matt Foley, I got an employee who, who, who could do that. And so mm -hmm. our monthly meetings become digitized as everything okay. they're sitting in their home. And what I found Tony was if I could help them laugh 
Mm -hmm. for just a little bit while giving some information about where we're going, create clarity and vision and do it in a platform that was fun and energizing. Yep. That would set in motion actually how they felt about their job, how they interacted with their customers, how they interacted with each other. And they were reminded that not everything has to be so serious. Yeah. And that's, I, I love, that's how we did that. I love it because it, it, it's actually one of the things that we did around Christmas. So we've got a team in the Philippines that runs uh, that's uh, the back end of our digital marketing side. And and um, the, our project manager, our, our digital marketing manager and, and I and our, our CTO got online and literally had a Christmas party with them on yeah. the beach in the Philippines. And they sang us songs and they, it was just hilarious. But, but even, even as we blend shores, we can, we can use technology to create an experience. If we think about delivering it that way, because it's required to now. So let me give you, a, let me give you a crazy thought. Okay. Right? So we have a wellness department at Rev Local where we talk about things like how do we create this incredible experience? How do we improve our culture? And now, Every conversation is about how do we weave this into our own customer's experience. So we did this online murder mystery. Okay. We got 20 employees because we're siloed more than ever in our own internal departments through the tactical of every day. Sure. And I want to make sure that they're meeting each other outside of their departments. So we create a murder mystery. It was a roaring, roaring 20s. I was the host. And it was so successful that I had a, a salesperson say, can I invite this really great uh, client of ours to the next one? Yep. And so we actually like this. This is what I'm talking about. The experience of your customers is starting yep. to mix with your culture more than ever. Mm -hmm. We had a murder mystery that wasn't just employee focused, but we invited customers to join and they walked away knowing each other better. Again, they're laughing, they're experiencing. And I think that if we're able to feed people emotionally and mentally uh, things that are helping their every day and they create a positive experience, then that has a lot to do with the brand impression that you're giving off. Well, I don't love what you're doing there. You're reimagining the experience to come through these different mediums, right? And just say, we're demanding the standard stays the same. Right. We're just going to have it in a different way. And uh, we're, we're, we did a program for a client where called Beers with Engineers. Yeah. Right. We're doing recruiting of engineers and they, you, you could get people to show you could. You know, we'd make thousands of calls and, and emails and we would get the guys to, to show up for a freaking interview. Right. right. And so we, we decided to change the whole format and went, you know, did a, 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 a microbrew of the week invited everybody to come on. If they agreed, we'd ship them the beer and we'd get online and remind them that they were going to have a beer with us. And it was, a, you know, just a big Zoom call with beers with engineers and we'd round table to talk about the beer. We, you know, and it turned, it, we got 20 new wrecks out of it. It was, it was so about reimagining and designing that experience. And I think that's what, that that's the, you're, it, it's not letting the standard down, right? It is no. demanding that the standards stay the same and you deliver it in a different way. Is that is that what you guys are doing? Yeah, I mean, I I think Rev Local prides itself in um, how we define culture, how we care about one another, and that's always translated to the value that our customers feel. And then they replicate that to their customers. This has been a transition that has caused us to think outside of the box, but that that brings good opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so it's a it's a race to get to new ideas and implement them in a way that are creative, fun, energetic. But it comes back to you asked the question through all of this complexity. Mm -hmm. I, Tony, I see business leaders that I look up to that are currently paralyzed. Yeah, they don't yeah. know how to move. And right, right now. We got to be thinking and trying things. And what, you know, in my, in my opinion, if I try something that's culture oriented mm -hmm. and it doesn't work, move on. I'm not afraid to well, fail. And, and part of that, you know, one of the things we talk with our clients is run controlled business experiments, you know, and I, and I say that jokingly, it's like, you know, pick a number or whatever you're willing to do to try that idea. And if it, if it fails good, what'd you learn from it? Move on. But you got to fit. That's the only way you're going to make breakthroughs. When you have the kind of volatility that we've had, you know, it creates unique opportunity. And what we've got to do is figure that unique opportunity out. I want to change gears on you for a second because you and I are, are 
in the restaurant business, um, got a great deal of our business in that business, and we're in the technology side. And, and we have seen, uh, we've seen this transformation not, not do so well for them, right? And, and so I've got a buddy, a buddy who owns four or five stores. I just called him this morning, you know, and he was tired. And why is he tired? He, I've never seen him work in his pizza restaurant before, before this year. You with me? Yeah. And the reason he's tired is we're having the championship game in Indianapolis and he's been working at the store all week because there's so many people in town and he doesn't have the staff to keep up. Right. So you got that kind of pressure on the restaurant business, 25 percent down in labor. Right. We talked about that. And then you've got because these because this space was it was illiterate really to the technology uh, through how Google and all the SEO PPC changes in how people found them or acquired business and how they would manage the delivery for themselves. They, they, they've got all these intermediaries that have moved in and kind of sat on the top of their margin. So last year he had a pretty good year, but when he looked at the numbers after he paid everybody out on the, you know, whether it's the, the door dashes or the, the Uber eats uh, or the uh, grub hubs, right? He made, he made, what do you say? 40% less profit. How, how are you helping those guys really mitigate that and find those in, those internal customers? So thank you for the question. I think it's a very important question. Mm -hmm. From a visionary and a leadership perspective, let me first answer it. We have to help them ask questions that are going to benefit them long term, not just today, because mm -hmm. there's a propensity to try to solve a solution that's not good long term. Mm -hmm. And so I ask the business owners, especially in the restaurant industry, what decisions today can you make that that a year from now you're going to be happy you made? Yeah. Right? We're starting a new year, December 31st, 2022. You're going to be happy you did what? Mm -hmm. And I call this kind of the Emerald City thinking. Yeah. Don't just stick in one place, but get out in front of your own thinking and your own pain. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be like this. Don't take a snapshot in time and perpetually apply it forward. Yep. But what's your Emerald City thinking? Where do you mm -hmm. want this to go for yourself? And how can you start to make changes? Because a lot of them have this emotion that I got to do everything at once. Yeah. Stay the course <laughs> and make incremental changes so that you can start to benefit on where you think this is going and where you believe that it's going to go. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Does well, that I mean, in, in some of that, sometimes, Aaron, is just simple as stop digging. Right. You know, if you're going the wrong direction, stop digging the hole. So you can at least start to move towards the direction you need to go. Right. And, and, and I think I'm saying because I see I see them, you know, keep keep moving more and more dependent on the reason they got in that hole. Right. They're 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 misscheduling their people. They're they're taking advantage of them or asking them to work hours outside their shifts. Like right? they're they're not they won't close the doors and, and work a smaller section because they they can't staff it. So they overwork their people and they wonder why they're burning out and getting another job. You got to stop digging. But 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 that's you know, that, that's it, it feels like because I was an operator back in a, dif a different life. It's easy to say hard to do. Right. If you're in the if you're in the if you're in the you know the fire and you're trying to you know trying to put it out, it's easy to stand up here from the fifty thousand foot view and say that we're you know armchair quarterbacking them. When you but you guys are getting in there on the marketing side and digging in a little, and and I think you're one of those partners that helps mitigate against all those other you know I would call lecheristic ways that they they get their their customers, especially on the especially with the um, the, um, the, the delivery apps, right? I mean, it's so bad that Domino's puts out a national oh, I love commercial. it, right? Yeah, right. Genius. Commercial. Yeah. I mean, it was, oh, what is it? Three minutes long? Yeah. It's crazy. It's just a diatribe going after the, the tech space because they're killing the industry. Am I wrong? No, you're not. And I think that's the, you know, there's two sides to technology changes mm -hmm. and we, we, we surface through those experiences mm -hmm. and the bad players will always find themselves out of, out of the game. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're going to go through this, uh, these new technology experiences, and we're going to find ultimately what's best going to work. Who's the real, real companies to help. Mm -hmm. But then with these business owners coming back to uh, helping restaurants on the marketing side, 
you know, it's always been a capacity game. Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I get past break even so that I can make money and break even happens in, in stages of time mm -hmm. is how do we, how do we appropriately fill the seats while making sure that those people are bringing what is most profitable to your company. So mm -hmm. that, that has allowed them to start to think about how to adjust. You, you walk into restaurants and the menu is one fourth of what it used to be. Why? Yeah. Well, because they actually answered a question that they were struggling to answer before or didn't even ask. So yeah. that, that long term can be a really good thing for them. Yeah. And so simplicity is going to win. Yeah. Well, I've seen this. I've seen closing during the middle of the afternoon. Right. So we're, we're giving our staff time not to be there during not peak time just because we want to cover it for for the you know, for get, for that one guest that came in during the time. Right. I've seen I've seen uh, people close on Mondays and Sundays. A lot more than they ever had before, right? Um, giving their giving their people a day off. New Year's Day, you couldn't find a restaurant open here in Carmel. I, I was pretty amazed, right? I was like, wow. How did that? Of, how did that make you feel, though? As a guest, I was I wasn't happy. <laughs> because <laughs> you know, because our I, expectations as consumers, especially as digital consumers, yeah, they're they're heightened. And more excessive than they've ever been. Coming back to how we started this, mm -hmm. we're not going to change. No. Right? No. If you don't give me a positive experience online and I'm coming to your, your business, your physical business, mm -hmm. my, my emotion is you're not even you're not even up to the times to even consider me as a, a client. No. You got to get your act together. Well, and, and, you know, I, I, what it, I really realized, I think in this, especially in the restaurant space is, you know, it, restaurants have really built themselves as a way to leverage real estate, right? We, right. we, and we, we got the real estate, we bought it, we put the concept. So the other, the next piece of that variable was concept, right? Do we have a menu? Do we have a service offering, you know, that, that matches the, 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 the location. What what is transformed in the last two years is well now we're in a capital optimization game where do I have the do I have a chef a server and the location and the concept and the guest at the right time, right? And can we put them together to deliver an experience? And oh by the way, that experience better be better than you bringing it to my house because I know what kind of service I get in my house. And they won't, you know, and I know that my 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 tip is fixed in the delivery fee instead of, you know, going there, waiting 30 minutes and you asking me for 30 percent. Right. I, the last restaurant I went was was 20, 25 and 30. And those were the only tips you could select. Right. You know, and I was like, man, they're just like it's push it on the customer. And, and so it's got to change. Right. There has to be a change coming. And and I, that's what that's kind of one of the things we're looking at. How do we do right uh, we're, we're, we think it's going to be the facilities getting smarter, uh, needing less people to do things and having the tech, having the, the facility do it through technology. But we I also think that the user is going to get different tools that they're going to be able to use to manage that relationship with with their with those with those restaurants. Well, yeah, you're, you're going to have an explosion of technology that didn't need to be thought of before COVID. Correct. So. That's where I come back to that leadership principle of the Emerald City. Mm -hmm. Don't take a snapshot in time and think that your experience and your pain today is going to be perpetually applied forward. Start mm -hmm. to innovate, start to be a visionary and start mm -hmm. to build out your business operations as though you anticipate it being for your own good. And, yeah. that, and there's no doubt, Tony, that the employment side is impacting how we think more than we ever could have predicted. Mm hmm. Yeah, and and, I, and I, as you think of leaders that are doing this well, I, I want to come back to the Domino story, right? I yeah. mean, they 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 you know Domino's uh, the this was four years ago. Domino's had 150 people in their technology side of their company, right? Just the technology piece. In fact, they have more people in technology than they did in food development. But it's it is generally known now in the investment community as a technology company, right? How Which did is, that happen? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Star, well, and, and to that point, Starbucks is now doing, I want to say, 47 to 45 percent of the revenue through the mobile app. Yeah. Right. I mean, it was 22 pre-COVID. I'm sure it spiked to almost 100. Hey, they got my 15-year-old daughter 
to take her Christmas money and put it in her prepaid card. They're using her dollars to float the finances of that company, and she feels great about it. What? How did they do that? Yeah, yeah the monthly, the, the, do, you, yeah. Do, do the girls have the monthly debit right yeah. in there so yeah. they get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she comes back. She went to get a you know a seven dollar coffee at fifteen. Mm-hmm. And she says, "Dad, they called my name out when they were done. You know how that makes me feel." And so, great companies are reprogramming the consumer yep. experience, yep. and they're finding creative ways. Yep. And my fifteen year old daughter's hooked now on Starbucks, and mm-hmm. she don't. You know, how long does that loyalty play out? Right. Probably the rest of her life, right? Well, I mean, I don't know if you're a, you're if you're an iPhone guy or a Droid. It, it, if you ever try to leave, right, and move from one eco ecosystem to the next, I got so mad at Apple last last year that I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm quitting. I'm moving to Droid. You can. And it lasted about it lasted about you know what, 24 hours that I had that idea till I realized how much my life was locked in. Right. And now I just complain about them, you know. Yeah. So so you know it it, it probably. 15 years of value there, uh, five, five phones on average between five and 20, right? What's the LTV, right? They've, they've got it figured out. When, and that is the answer. And I really, I really want to kind of tell you that. That's the reason why we need to think in terms of these experiences, right? right. Because if, you know, when, you, when you're going out raising money or you're, you're talking to venture capitalists, the, you know, what it almost always, it, it, it always comes down to is, What's your cost of acquisition versus the LTV of this revenue stream? That's how we're going to financially value your organization or what it, what the future of it could be. And if you're not designing experience and you're still thinking in terms of transactions for products or services, you've already lost. Is that fair? Well, I think you bring up a point that's not being talked about right now, mm-hmm. which is the investment community, our VC world mm-hmm. has got to change their mm-hmm. expectation. Because the lack of operational knowledge of what it's going to take to make it through these days could cause them to have such unrealistic expectations that they pull the funding for businesses that actually could have made it. Well, yes. And I I still I'm still dealing with this. I know you and I have riffed on this before. I'm still dealing with a lot of guy, a lot of these, the, the VC that because we're not complete pure SaaS. You know, we're we're most of the stuff that we're doing in our in our incubator or our accelerator is tech enabled, right? We're just tech enabling a service. I'm like, well, is Uber a SaaS company, right? Is so what know, do they do when the experience changed? Because we remember, like a year before COVID hit, you had all of these retail stores that were just pulling the plug to say everybody wants to go digital. But mm-hmm. then what they found as they started to do that was that the consumer actually wanted a a cross experience. And so yep. it's called fidgetal, right? Physical yep. and digital. Mm-hmm. And so we call it seamless, but you can call it fidgetal. Sure. Right. So, <laughs> so what happens when we as consumers change, because we're capable of doing that, mm-hmm. saying, actually, we don't want what you're feeding us. We want this. Mm-hmm. And that's where I come back to, you know, you really got to get out in front of, of where you want to go. Because the consumers, I, you know, like I'm a fan of like relationships still mattering. And I think coming out of COVID, um, we found our, our clients wanted to still talk to somebody. Yeah. Now now we still want to serve those that have made the full transition. However, we have to be prepared to, to understand that relationships still matter in some capacity. Right. Well, there's a couple things there I'd love to kind of, finish with, you know, and, and we talk about with our clients, we're doing a lot of jobs to be done innovation, a lot of, um, you know, reimagining the, 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 the world of what could be, um, how technology could augment and deliver a better experience. But, but what it comes down to, you know, so there's, a, there's this one side where you got, you got jobs saying, if you, you know, that, that if you ask the customer what the customer wants, they would tell you faster horses, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and maybe that was Ford. I know it was one of them. I think you repeated it, but but then you've got then you, so we do have to we do have to get out of our own way and perception of the now and and look at how these new technologies can augment and deliver 
a different experience to leapfrog what was being done before. Because there's so many people just putting a layer of paint on old stuff. You know what I mean? Right. And where Domino's is really, we use that example, is transform their entire experience to be as much digital and, 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 and seamless as one than, than anybody. Starbucks was way ahead of everybody on that, too. That's why you, we, we've got our daughters addicted to that. But, but how do you help these, these mid-market and these smaller businesses get their head around thinking that way? So we do this in our business. You know how many customers I have that try to do Google ads on their own and mm -hmm. they assume that ad marketing is all bad? Mm -hmm. Well, because you have one experience doesn't mean that all the experiences perpetually forward or have to be bad. So mm -hmm. what you got, it's really, it's the game of the mindset. And how do we help move the customer experience? Mm -hmm. Can we, do we believe that it's possible? And so what Domino's has been so great at is the customer can never envision what we, how we now experience that. They didn't rely on the customer to tell them everything, but they started to implement and they started to move their customer along that, that journey. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do it in small bites, you do it in positive experiences. And the next yep. thing you know, we're addicted to things we could have never envisioned as consumers. And they listened to the data from their users about what to build next, right? They didn't just, you know, they didn't just uh, um, uh, draw, uh, put a design for a huge but house. Great, there. Where does great data come from? It comes from great questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. All right. What's the, what do you see the future of your business in this digital transformation game? How do you see your business changing and the way you deliver value in the next five years? Yeah. So that's, that's the ultimate question, right? Mm -hmm. um, the technology pace is not going to slow down. We cannot run from it and how we provide great marketing solutions has the, the, the technology edge is table stakes. Mm -hmm. You can't be in the marketing game unless the technology is working on behalf of the customers that you're serving. And that's different for every industry. And because RevLocal serves virtually every industry in the small business space, mm -hmm. we have to be open minded to how quickly we can integrate new technologies into that solution. So for whatever sure. the solution is today, we have to have a, a, a mindset that it probably needs to change tomorrow. Well, and, and I think one of the things I've seen you guys do, and I'm just going to speak to this, is like not only do you get it integrated fast, you drive adoption both internally and externally fast because we have adoption because we have a real relationship with our customers and yeah. that's where i don't see us changing in that i want to own the customer experience i want the, the small business to trust us authentically so that as change accelerates and new opportunities come through us their way we can help move them in that direction Watch, continue to watch Rev Local deliver the seamless experience and how it evolves. I got a plug in on your plug. 